you up, you're up next. Uh, I know you offered first, no, that's right. Thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. You got to understand when, when I get up here, there's a lot of things going through my mind the whole time. I, I'm not just there paying praise and worship. I'm thinking about the sermon. I'm thinking about who's here, who's not here. I'm thinking about something we can do to help somebody. You know, all that stuff. So when I'm up here, don't think I'm just up here playing. All right? There's a whole lot going on in that little pea brain up there, okay? <laughs> All right, that little pea brain's got about five uh, can of peas going on. Amen? All right, all right. Okay, go ahead, get your offering out if you've got it. If you don't, just put your hand up. You can either put it in at the back gate, back gate. <laughs> you, put it in, you put it in at the front door on the way in or on the way out. Amen? If you don't have any offering, no matter what, put your hand up. Ready? Let's say this together. I lift my offering to you, let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed, although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give all the hands that means all the loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity to gather in your house and amongst thy people, Lord God. And as we gather in one mind and one accord, we ask that you be here ministering in each and every one of us. You heard the request. You see the needs. Father, we just ask you for a special touch this morning. Minister to each and every one of them, spoken and unspoken alike, Father. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Let your people see it that they may grow believe and depend on right. for all things. And give testimony how you move in their life. Now, Father, be with us in the remainder of this service today. Anoint the pastor and he delivers the message. Give us ears to hear, Father. Father, help us draw closer unto you in all these things, and we'll be sure to give you honor and praise for it all. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, y'all stand back up. Look, 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 do this now, watch. Look at somebody and do this. Watch. Now don't point at me, point at yourself. Look what the Lord has done. Okay, do it to yourself. Look what the Lord has done. Can somebody do that? Point, point your hand to yourself and go, look what the Lord has done. Now look over at the person beside you and point to them and say, look what the Lord has done. Amen. Ready? Jesus loves me. That's the very first song I learned. My mama taught me 
you that? When I was just a little bitty tight, and I thank God that she taught me that we'd sing it all together. And then my brothers, we all sing it together. Okay, it's just something very special, and it's awesome for Christmas time. All right? What, what we decide to do it in? See? See? Jesus loves me. We get 
Well, no, I'm not going to be 1334 yet. Next, I'm going to do it third. I think the Bible verse that we all remember the most when we think of love is probably 13th Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am becoming a sounding brass and as a tickling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and through, and through, I, though I give my body <laughs> to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envy is not, it is not, <clears throat> it does not value itself, it is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemingly. I wish my vision was better. <laughs> Mm, I lost my place. It seeketh not its own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. Love rejoiceth not in, equi in inequity, but, with, but with rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It leaves all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. And in this time of preparation, coming up to the birth and the first coming, we need to remember that love in our hearts as Christians. We need to reflect on that. We need to act on it as we go through our day-to-day -day lives. Because there are people out there, no matter what you have, how much you have or how little you have, there is always someone that is less fortunate than you. So try to remember that in this season of giving. Um, the Advent itself, I did mention last week, you don't just have to look at the Advent on Sunday morning. The Advent is more than that. It's your personal preparation for the first and the second coming. You can have an Advent can candle at home. You can just plan something to do each week that reflects the theme of the week. You can you can clean out that toy box and give that to someone that, that needs it worse than you do. You can take your plug into the women's shelter because you know it's needed there. There are churches and organizations that take taking coats this time of year so that they can give it out, give them out when it is truly cold and there are people in the street that need them. So as you do Advent, please think with love in your heart. And then my last Bible verse to go with this. Yes. <laughs> and I keep dropping things. It's one that Jesus gave us himself. A new commandment I give you, that ye shall love one another, as I have loved you, that you shall always all that you shall also love one another. So, he wants you to love your neighbor, not your neighbor that's like you, not your neighbor that, that you approve of. He wants you to love your neighbor, which is everybody out there that you see in the street. Um, and like I said, this is the season for that. We want to keep that in our hearts now. We want to keep that in our hearts all year. And that's, that's it for me today. We now have two candles lit. <laughs>
because there's so many ways you can look at it, and it's so powerful, and it's so full of God's richness. Amen. All of that. We're going to do something a little, little different today, and it's going to be, I, I preached on this subject before, but not this way. And so, uh, it's very important because if you turn on the television right now, you how many's heard at least 500 times just the most wonderful time of the year? How many's heard that? At least one time. How many when you get in your car you hear about it so full of joy and so full of love and, and everybody's having a good time, then you go to the mall and it's roller derby time. Matter of fact, it's, it's demolition derby time. You know, uh, I can tell you that one, the one thing about uh, when Sierra was uh, at that shooting in the mall a couple of weeks ago. She said, Paul, you couldn't even move in the place. There were so many people. And there were strollers and there was cars and there was gifts. She said, but when the shooting started ringing out, people ran and they left their gifts and they left their carts and they left the strollers just grabbed their babies and they ran wow the most wonderful time of the year Thursday I was here getting ready to do some work and I was already prepped up to do the work and I get a call from my wife and she says there's a report of a mass shooter at Washington High School and report that people are down. So I started putting everything back up together. And about that time, Sierra called. She said, Paul, Paul, I'm going to stand by. You need to pray for me. I text Emmy because she was in class. And I said, Are you okay? She says, I'm good, Paul, Paul. When we got there, there was police, state patrol, everything around that high school. They were right behind the high school. They were all up in my yard, and parents, and they're all up and down the all up and down the street. Just waiting to hear if their kid was okay. It changes your perspective. When life does you occur, Paul Paul. Last night I had a dream. I still don't know what the dream's about all the way. But in this dream, I was the only one there that I knew. So obviously God was letting me see something that's going to happen that y'all are not going to be involved in. People I don't even know. And it woke me up and I kept having a dream. It kept finishing. A lot of times when you wake up from a dream, it ends the dream. I'd wake up and I'd stir and I'd go back to sleep and I'd write right where I left off. And in that dream, there was a time given that the world was coming to an end. It would be destroyed. I can't say if I was there or just looking. I don't know, but I know I did not know these people. And I watched as the time got closer and closer. And then literally all of hell broke loose. I saw mass destruction everywhere. But God hadn't come back yet. And I woke up. And I said, Lord, are you trying to show me something? Are you trying to teach me something? And it's got something to do with what I'm going to talk about today. So I want you to listen carefully. And I feel like I tried to, like I did last week, I tried to set down through most of it, but that doesn't always work, so that's okay. I think somebody said it's okay. He likes to run. Okay. Here we go. First, let me tell you a joke. <laughs> I was at, this is an oldie but goldie. I love it at Christmas time. I was at PCDC this week and I asked a guy, a uh, guy had just been brought in that day and he was in terrible shape. And I said, What you charged with? He said, Doing my Christmas shopping early. I said, That's not an offense. I said, How early were you doing your shopping? He said, Before the store opened. <laughs> uh, that was an offense. All right. Remember, I've, I've, I've taught this before, but not like this. The miserable blessing. The miserable blessing. Get your book out. 
Turn to the book of Luke. Your Bible out. Turn to the book of Luke. Everybody got your Bible? Say amen. amen. You got to stand up. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. It's going to read a little bit. Oh, by the way, there was no shooter at the high school. Uh, it was a, a thing that was done across the state. Uh, my daddy in Greensboro said it was all in Greensboro. It was in Franklin County. It was all over some kind of, somebody told us it was a TikTok challenge. I don't know, but, but, but when they find out who did this and the ones that did this, I really think that we don't just go say, they're there, don't do that again. Okay? Something needs to be done. If we don't start doing stuff about stuff like this, it's going to get worse. And I dreamed last night. Let me see just how bad things can get. Alright. Luke chapter 1. For as much as, verse 1. For as much as I have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, which is from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also to having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent the office. Let me just stop for a minute. This is Luke. Luke is a historian. He starts out in the book of Luke and the book of Acts and the four Bible was first put together. Luke and Acts were put together in a two volume set. And then when they separated and put the, the, the four Gospels together, then they went Matthew, Mark, Luke, <coughs> John, <coughs> and then and then put the book of Luke. The both, both books of Luke, there were, and the book of Luke 1 and the book of Luke 2, was written to Theophilus. Theophilus is lover of God. So this could be an actual person that they're trying to, to, to keep his identity hidden so that he won't come under persecution or it just mean the lovers of God. So we're love, I was a lover of God. Amen. What's written for you? Are you ready? <laughs> that thou mayest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child. I said no child. <coughs> because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course, it meant his, his time was, it was his time to step up. Not only like it's time to say it's time for us to step up. That's right. According to the custom of the priest's office, his life was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the same time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Let's just stop. Let me just read more verse. And we'll stop. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. One more verse. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. Y'all say joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice in his birth. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you are alive and well in your own throne. Ask you right now, Lord, to bless us, God, to help us to see Christmas in a whole different way. <coughs> and to know that in this crazy time that we live in, that you're still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you're still in control and you're still on the throne. Ask you right now, Lord, to minister to everybody here today, God. Everybody in here needs a touch, but not everybody needs the same touch. But you're a God, amazing God of everyone in here. And you can give us what we need. In the name of Jesus we pray. Church said? Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap and pray.
Now, the prosperity message. There's a message of prosperity that's all over the place. Matter of fact, you know how when you go to a Mexican restaurant, you don't know if you're really getting real Mexican food or you're getting Americanized Mexican food. You go to a Chinese restaurant, you don't know if you're really getting real Chinese food or Americanized Chinese food. Amen? Amen. I hear people tell me all the time, this is real Italian. This is real. And I've been there in my life for a month ago. That's not Italian. Because my mother-in-law is a real Italian, and that's not how she could be. Amen. It's not the stuff she used. So, so we have the Americanized version. Well, we've got the gospel. And if we're not careful, the gospel has been Americanized. That's why this gospel is Americanized. You can't preach it to somebody in Haiti who is facing voodoo doctors. It's hard to preach it to somebody that's living in a drought-ridden Africa that's doing their best to even provide milk for their infants. So God wants the, wants the gospel not to be Americanized. He wants the gospel to be pure. The pure gospel can be preached anywhere, anytime, to anyone. The pure gospel is a very powerful thing. The pure gospel is so powerful that people do literally within themselves rise up from their dead situations. So we got the prosperity gospel. And not only has it softened the gospel message, it's actually softened a lot of Christians. Now, now, now this is not a shouting message right now, but it'll get there, I promise. Maybe not this week, but maybe next week, all right? We look at COVID-19. How many remember COVID-19? Of course, now it's COVID-22 plus. They did say that it might be called an endemic soon. You know what an endemic is? An endemic is when they say it's just going to be with us forever. And when it comes, we're just going to take care of business. But there's still people die of COVID-19 or COVID. It's called COVID now, not COVID-19. COVID-22 plus, it just keeps on coming. The hits just keep rolling. And we saw the stuff going on, but the COVID, not just COVID, but we see in during this COVID and the prosperity message, and honestly, uh, at this moment, can I just be honest and real? I'm gonna get as real as real can, do, can get. Somebody say, let down the plow twice, Pastor. Let down the plow. Let down twice. Plow. All right. Since COVID, not only has it enhanced the prosperity gospel, believe it or not, but it's also tinted the prosperity gospel. Our nation has become a nation of entitlement. Don't shout me down. Our nation has become a nation of entitlement. You know, uh, high gains with little effort. I want you to give me, give me, give me. My name's Jimmy, Jimmy, give me, give me. There's a, now, wait a minute before you. There's a difference in a hand up. A hand up is good. A hand up enhances people. There's a lot of people in the world who want to give a hand up to. There's people that are true need. These people are real need. We want to help them. And God blesses us for the hands up. But God is not going to bless us for the handouts. I'm sorry, he's not. He's not. You wonder why we just keep handing out and nothing happens? It's because that's not his way. Hands up is perfect. It's good. It enhances, but handouts is bad. And it enables those that already think they're entitled to sit back and say, just keep, keep pouring. I'm going to sit here and do nothing. So that's con con hooked up with the prosperity gospel. And if you don't know way to look at it, watch this. Here's what's happened in this world between the prosperity gospel and the entitlement, uh, entitlement issues that we have. Watch this. We want to be an overcomer without the challenge of overcoming. How many had to fight spiritual battles this week? Good. That's awesome. When you fight battles, that means Satan's coming at you. It also means you're winning. Because you're still here. Okay, you might not feel like you're winning, but you are. Who want the spoils of victory without the scars of battle? 
is an empty victory. Let me tell you something. That has never been God's plan. Ever. And just to show you God's plan and to show you how he's done it, he sent his son in the middle. Now, he, didn't just send, he didn't send his son to a playground. He sent his son to a battleground. He didn't just send his son into something where he was in the lap of luxury. He put him where the rubber meets the road so everybody can call him Savior. So, so I see this. I, 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 I'm, I'm getting there. I know it's kind of quiet, but it's okay. There's never, this has never been God's plan. He's raised up a mighty army that's not afraid to face the challenge, not afraid to collect scars, not afraid to stand in this last generation and declare, we will not go silently in the night. If you're going through something today, I thank God that you're going through something. Because that means you're overcoming. You're not going to get stronger by doing nothing. Amen? God's got something for us, but it's not going to be handed to us on a silver platter. God wants us to get in the fight. I noticed, I told you I was going to sit, and I'm trying to. I'm really concerned that if the next generation doesn't get out of this entitlement thing and get up on the cross, the great falling away is going to be multiplied. I'll let it sink in for a minute. COVID started the great falling away. And now the hybrid <clears throat> prosperity entitlement. It's going to be what shuts. It's going to be the weapon that Satan uses to shut the doors to the church the world. I don't know about you, but I don't plan on going out of here silently in the night. I want to stand up and I want to fight. Last night, between the last two things, one granddaughter in the mall, she was really close. She was right there. She saw them. There she was. And then uh, and, and the shooters, and then my other granddaughter, she's there when there was a report of active shooters. Of course, again, it was a hoax, but she was right there. And, and 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 that dream I had last night. We need to get away from the Americanized gospel and get to the pure gospel. And stand up and make a stand. Put your foot down and say it with me. Y'all say it with me. I will not go silently and not say it with me. I will not go silently and not say it again. I will not go silently. And I say it again. I will not go silently in the night. Amen. Give on a hand clap of praise. <laughs> okay. So now, let's get ready. There it goes. It's easy. As you get through here, you know, uh, uh, it's easy to become a spectator. It's easy to take your boots off the ground because you're tired. It's easy to take your boots off the ground because things aren't necessarily going the way you had planned. But here it comes. Get, listen, listen carefully. It's easy to lose sight of the real blessings. You see, real blessings don't always come without struggle, without pain, and with answers. Can I say that again? Real blessings don't always come without struggle, without pain, and with answers. I remember Friday morning as we sat there and watched them put my mother-in-law in that transport. We were there with her that night before. We were there with her the next day. And I remember as they were putting her in that transport and they were to take her to Virginia. Uh, they found a, a, a good nursing home. It's by my brother-in-law. My, my brother so he's right there. Right there at it. And, and I believe God orchestrated it. But when, but when we put her in that, when we put her in that transport, and she's looking at us, I saw the look on her face, and I saw Linda say, I love you, Mama. And they shut those doors. All I could hear was turnarounds coming. Turnarounds coming. And my heart broke. 
as I saw her drive off with her. For a five hour drive, she finally got there. And all I could think about was this sermon. Blessings don't always come without struggle, without pain, without answers. Taking care of her mama with Alzheimer's or daddy with, with uh, 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 I can't even think of the word for it right now, but he, 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 he uh, vascular dementia and Bethany with cancer. We were taking care of all three of them at the same time. And then they started dying off one by one to a month long now she pulled away and there it is. Blessings don't always come without struggle, without pain, and with answers. I don't understand why Bethany died of cancer. I don't understand why her daddy, who loved God and was, was all he could be for God, uh, uh, why he got vascular dementia. And I definitely don't know why my mother-in-law is dealing with his Alzheimer's. But you know what? In the middle of all of that, I never lost sight of the real blessings. You see, often at least you ask in the Lord, if I'm so blessed, get ready. Get ready to knock on somebody's door. Lord, if I'm so blessed, then why am I so miserable? Mm. That's powerful. If I'm so blessed, God, then why am I so miserable? Why, why is it that I feel like the way of the world is just knock me down? Well, I thought there's a 10 ton weight on my chest. Another 10 ton weight on my back. Why is it? See, I'm getting somebody's cornflakes now. Get ready. Let me tell you something. Tribulation, distress, and misery. <laughs> Blessing equals building. Building equals struggle. Struggle equals misery. Temporary. And misery equals blessing. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. And that word affliction is tribulation, distress, misery. Now, now, the person writing this is Paul. Paul said, but our light affliction. Paul had been beaten with rods. He had been stoned. He had been left for dead. He had been shipwrecked. He had gone hungry. He had been naked in the cold. Paul knew what trouble was. And he all that trouble he'd been through, he called it a light affliction. That word light means small. And affliction also means push. So it can be this. Not only is it affliction, distress, and misery, it's a small push. In other words, when I compare it to what's coming, this is nothing. Y'all help me out here. When I compare what's going to be on the other side, when I see Bethany, and I see my father-in-law, and I see my mother-in-law, and I see my mama with legs and with eyes again, and, and, I, and I see these people all over again, you know what? I'm going to say, you know what? There was a lot of misery and struggle down here, but you know what? Praise God. Watch you run in the fields of the Lord. All, every day we, we thank God since Bethany died. Every day we thank God for <clears throat> Taking Bethany to be with him and taking Maddie, our, our black lab. And every time we say that, I see Bethany and Maddie running in the fields of the Lord playing together. And I said, thank you, God. That's so much better than both of them. Both of them had cancer. So much better. So, so, remember, blessing equals building. Building equals struggle. Struggle equals mystery or misery. Misery equals blood. And it's a good Christmas message. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't come out and say, if that's a Christmas message, yeah, find something else. Watch. The anatomy of a blessing. Ready? First, there's the promise. The promise, I got to point that seat out again. The promise requires time. That's why a lot of people think they don't get their promises because they can't wait. We got microwave popcorn. My boys used to think it was. We were, we were roughing it when the microwave went down. They were really roughing it like an That's why I built a, I tell them, why I built a campfire in the back and, and cook the popcorn on the campfire. No, Dad. You think we're roughing it? I said, I didn't know what a microwave was. So, with God's promise comes time. Greatest example of all is Abraham. 
God promised him that his seed would be beyond any measure. But right now, his wife can't even have a baby. So, here's the daddy blessing. So, not only is there a promise, with every promise God gives you, he gives you a problem. <laughs> Somebody said, thanks a lot. With every promise God gives us, He gives us a, a problem to go along with the promise. That's why sometimes you think, if God's blessing me, I wish He could have blessed me so much. Because the problems just keep coming. Because first, the problems say time. Next is the problem, say, say test. God's going to test you. He's going to test you during that time. Jesus, Jesus didn't go to start preaching. Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. and was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of all those temptations, there was hundreds of them. Then he had the great three. Paul, he didn't start preaching. Paul himself had his wilderness experience. God puts us in the wilderness to test us. Here's the test. His wife's barren. But the path is going to be your testimony. I didn't say the end result. The path is going to be your testimony. You're going to be able to tell somebody, God told me that I was going to, this is my promise. God told me. And I had a hard time holding on, but I really trusted him in those dark hours. It's like that caterpillar. When that caterpillar goes in the cocoon, you know when a caterpillar goes in a cocoon and he builds that cocoon around him that he literally turns to jelly? And as he turns to jelly, there's something going on in the dark places that God's built him wings and built him a new body. As he's done turning to jelly inside that, inside that dark place. And, and, and so he had to promise you're going to be a butterfly. But the test is now that butterfly is in that dark place. And now he's going, I've never felt like this before. I feel like I can't even stand up. I feel like I can't even move because he's turned to jelly. But then the path, the testimony, you're going to tell people, you know, Abraham... He trusted God. But 25 years passed. Let it sink in. 25 years passed before his wife had that baby. Joseph, he was going to be the prime minister. He was going to be used mightily, going to rule the world. And for 13 years, his feet were in shackles. 13 years. Moses was going to help lead God's children out of Egypt. But for 40 years, he was on the backside of the de desert. Jesus was going to be the greatest preacher that ever lived. But God didn't just place him. 30 years, he had to go through everything we went through. People think that Jesus never had a snotty nose. Then Jesus never had a dirty diaper. Jesus never had a childhood disease. Jesus went through everything we went through. And for the first 30 years, he was going through everything we went through. He said, well, we're working in a business. He ran his daddy's business because his daddy died when he was young. He became, he was never married, though, but he became the head of the family. He took care of his brothers and sisters and took care of his mother. <clears throat> Even on the cross, he's taking care of his mother. So look, your promise comes, it's going to take time. The problem is going to be, you're going to be tested during this time. But that whole path, the whole thing, that whole journey is going to be your testimony. How you let go and let God. So now, no matter, not, it's not a matter of earning a blessing. Listen carefully. It's not a matter of earning a blessing, but it's a matter of letting go build you or, or to build you to be able to handle the blessing. Remember, the blessing always glorifies God. So now we're getting ready to get into it. Ready? Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> that was the introduction. How do you like the introduction? <laughs> All right, ready? There were the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. 
They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both were now well stricken in years. In other words, I said, oh. And I told Linda the other day, I said, some waitress was waiting on us. She was in her 20s. And after I uh, gave her the check, she walked and says, thank you, honey. And Linda looked over and said, yeah, honey. And I said, I'm old enough to be her granddaddy. Matter of fact, I'm old enough to be her great granddaddy. And Linda went, huh? I said, you know that we have granddaughters of childbearing age, and if they have babies, you know what I'm going to be? I'll be a great granddad. And then said, oh, no, no, no. She went, man. I don't like that. Why? Because she'd be a great grandma. <laughs> All right. I want you to watch wherever I got these things highlighted or emboldened. And it came to pass that while they executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people that were praying without in the time of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when the Lord judged, and Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, Fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, Where shall I know this? For here it is, for I am an old man and will have been stricken in years. And the angel answered to him, saying, I am Gabriel, thou stand, that stands in the presence of God, and I have sent to speak to thee and to show you these glad tidings. I'm getting ready to do it. <laughs> Back when I was a teenager and a young teen in my neighborhood, if somebody was going to get the best of you, <coughs> or was going to get one over on you, they called it cheetah ball. You ever heard of cheetah ball? Okay, cheetah ball. I got you. Cheetah ball. You can't get out of this with cheetah ball. Well, it's Gabriel just cheetah ball him and his watch. And behold, thou shalt, thou, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because I believe not my words, which shall be fulfilled in this season. And then the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned of them, and remained speechless. After those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, and thus saying, Thus the Lord hath dealt with me in these days, wherein he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. So ready? Here it comes. Get ready. The miserable blessing starts. It starts with Zacharias and Elizabeth. Ready? Zacharias doubts God's message. He's miserable. Zacharias is stricken dumb. He's more miserable. Elizabeth's happy, but she's hiding. She's miserable. Baby didn't even move until Mary arrived. They weren't even sure if it was alive. They were miserable. Zacharias mouth opens when he delivers the name John. Miserable, 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 miserable. I'm blessed, 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 but I'm miserable, 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 miserable. How many here are going to raise a hand and say, I'm blessed, 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 but I'm miserable, 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 miserable. And you say, if I'm so miserable, how can I be blessed if I'm so miserable? God doesn't intend for me to be miserable. Really? This world is not our home. We're just strangers and pilgrims walking through. God never meant for us to get settled here. God expects us to be ready when he comes. I told somebody just the other day, I said, I said, you better go ahead and get ready, son. I said, you think you can carry all this with you? 
I said, I promise you, I've preached hundreds of funerals in my lifetime, and I've yet one time, have not one time seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul. The Rockefeller used to be the richest man in the world. And they asked when he died, they said, somebody said, how much did Rockefeller leave? Somebody else said, all of it. So God allows us to be stirred like baby eagles stirred so they can be ready to get the blessing and then pass the blessing on. So Zechariah that's the blessing. He's miserable. He's tricking them. He's miserable. Elizabeth's happy behind. She's miserable. The baby had not moved for six months. She's miserable. When the baby's born, they're expecting him to name him Zacharias. He calls him John. And when he calls him John, like the angel said, his mouth opens up. You got to know that God is still in charge. He has your best interest at His heart. His timing is always perfect. I've said this to so many guys every Monday when I go to Pitt Detention Center. I bet I'll say this, this one page right here. I bet I'll say this one page to about at least, at least four or five inmates. And sometimes I've had to tell them over and over and over and over again. When you can't see his plan, when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. Just the other day, and I thought I already told you this before, I'll say it again for those who weren't here. I went into B5 and some guys were having a hard time and I said I know you don't like the path that you're taking I know you'd like to change it but you can't change the past and I said if it was even possible you would have never got messed up with drugs and alcohol but you did and I can sit here and blow skittles up your, up your nostrils they ain't going to help I'm going to tell you the truth. When God called you before you were born, He knew that you were going to get messed up on drugs. He knew that you were going to mess up and, 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 and ruin a lot of things. But He put that all in the equation. And on the other side of this misery, you're going to be a blessing because you've got something to tell other people that I don't have. And God's going to pour out through your journey. And out of nowhere, in come the coordinator. And he said, he said, look, he said, hey, bro, can I have this come in? I said, sure. And he said, starting next week, first I'm going to see who's interested, but starting next week, we're going to be the first detention center in North Carolina we're going to start a peer support group and you're going to become a peer support specialist how many is interested in all that they just and they just look like they've seen a ghost and they all raised their hands that are all certified and they're going to take that and they said they're going to take they want to take what you've been through and use it to help other people and when he walked out, people looked at me and went, whoa, did you know he was coming in? I said, no. They said, did you know he was going to offer that? I said, no. He, they said, well, how did you know to tell us that God was going to take what we've been through and use it? And then he'd come in. I said, that was all God. 100%. That was all God. I'm here to tell you today. The things that make me miserable today are going to be a blessing in the long run. It's not only going to bless you, but it's going to bless others along the way. I just put it up here as one thing. I, just, I couldn't even decide what to do, so I just put them up there, both of them. There's one thing that God says to every believer, regardless of his circumstances. Trust me. 
and the cross, <laughs> even though you struggle, God loves you, and he will always love you. Brandon, come up and play something softly. Everybody stand up and bow your heads. Before we leave today, we've got two guys getting shoulder surgery tomorrow. And so we want both of them when we get through praying. We're going to them come up. We're going to get all the church around them. We're going to pray for them because that's not, not the easiest of surgeries. And you never know exactly what's going to happen at these surgeries. We'll call them up later. But right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. <laughs> How many in here can say, Pastor, I know God's got this, but I don't understand why I feel <coughs> so miserable. I'm thankful for today because that gave me a little insight. But I'm still miserable and I need God to touch me. But nobody looking around, every eye closed. Would you stick that hand up? I'm miserable. Now, maybe you're in here and you'd like to say, trust him but I need him to help me trust him more put that hand up I trust him I need him to trust him more God's got this we're going to pray together okay Father I love you I praise your name I thank you for your grace and mercy I ask you right now Lord to help me to reach out to you as you reach back, I rededicate my life, my ministry, my family, my work to you. I don't understand. I always want to see your hand, but I can't at times. But I'm going to trust your heart. Thank you, God. Because Jesus loves us. And he's going to take care of us. And in the end, it's going to be better than the beginning. I thank you for the promise. I thank you for the test. I thank you for the testimony. I'm yours. And I trust you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah, make sure, I like what he just said, make sure you follow the doctor's instructions. I, I tore a calf muscle and injured my knee, and Dr. Cook told me to stay off my knee for two weeks. And I couldn't do it. I was walking to the hospital on the third floor one day, and I just had one crutch instead of two, and I was walking like this, and she was talking to somebody, and she saw me, and she went, whoa! And she screamed at me and come running up behind me. I said, is everything all right? She said, why did I tell you? No way on that leg for two weeks. And she said, it's only been a week. What did I tell you? I mean, she would. And I said, I'm sorry, doctor. It's hard to. She said, if your leg keeps hurting, don't you come running to me. <laughs> I said, I won't, doc. <laughs> uh, when my leg hurts, I got somebody else that says, why did I couldn't tell you? <laughs> she's about that tall. She's pretty. She's Italian. Yeah. All right. Everybody happy? <laughs> I know this is. Was, I promise you, it gets better. This is just the introduction uh, and, and the start. Because when it gets to, it's going to get show more misery. But the, the reason for this set of messages is because things at this moment, this whole world is miserable. The whole world. With all this stuff between COVID and all the things that's happening around us, it's just, I, I've never seen the world so miserable. 
and you go through roses, not roses, but, but Walmart, and you know it's like you need a bulletproof vest. It's gone crazy. And the world's miserable. But God's still in control. He said this was coming. And we got that promise. And the biggest thing is, we know he's going to be with us, and he loves us through it all. Everybody happy? <laughs> now you happy? <laughs> all right, I made it all better right now. <laughs> Let's say the Lord's Prayer. And then I'm going to ask Doug to, to lead, us to, lead us out of here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Father, heaven, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today to hear your word spoken in the spirit and in the truth. Lord, we, we definitely don't understand your plan 100% of the time, but we know that we can trust you. We know that your hand is upon us. Lord, help us to go forth and spread your word and let our, our test come forth in the testimony that others would see you working in our lives. I pray that you would be with us as we depart, that you would be with our families, that you would protect us and keep us safe. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.